Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific look at a vehicle from the Project Gotham roster. This time once again from the latest game, at least for now, Project Gotham 4. And of course we're always hoping for a new one, fans of this series. Now this vehicle is one of those cars which, despite technically being in a street racing franchise, it's not exactly a street car. In fact, it's not a street car at all. They only built nine of these and it was homologated for GT1 racing. And of course, in the 2000s, that was less stuff like the Toyota GT1, the Panos, and more so stuff like the Maserati MC12 and the Celine S7. And incidentally, although this car doesn't tend to get the same recognition that those often do, and it's certainly not featured in as many games as they are, and other stuff like the Aston DBR9, the Corvette C6R, and various others too, it's actually still a very good car. In fact, a Murcielago RGT actually won the 1000 km endurance race at Catalonia, even beating out cars like the Salina 7. So certainly a very impressive machine, even though for some strange reason, it's not talked about as much. And that kind of surprises me because the Murcielago is a very popular car. I hear tons of love for various versions from the original, to the LP640, to the LP670, and even the offshoots like the Mura Concept and the Reventon, which underneath were based on the same car. Now this one has a lot of mechanical differences to the regular one, of course it's significantly lighter, way more downforce, racing tyres, and most notably rear wheel drive only, there is no all wheel drive version of the RGT, and there are actually different variations even of this one. There's this original, which is probably the best known. There's actually an SV version, which was later on in the GT1 series, and also a Super GT variant for Japan, which is one of the rarest of them all in terms of people talking about it. In fact, many people don't even know that there was a Super GT version. Now, as far as this one goes, of course, the specs in the game don't exactly mirror real life. For instance, they do rate it very highly, of course, in the A category, but for top speed, they give it a full 10. That's it's a bit generous. The car should not have a 10 for top speed, given that stuff like the Ultimate Aero has a 10, or even the Toyota GT1. Those cars generally do, or genuinely even, do have very good top speeds. This one simply doesn't, and it shouldn't, because the original Murcielago, which this is based on, was only a 205 mile per hour anyway. Only, of course. And then the LP640, about 211, and the SV a little bit more again. This one has a lot more downforce and for the most part closer gearing. So of course it's not gonna be as quick. So you're looking at about 200 tops. So that definitely shouldn't be a 10. As far as acceleration though, it is very good. In real life, about three seconds to 60, which again, considering that you don't have all wheel drive on your side, that's good, it's very good. The weight of course is far lower, it's a good 400 or more kilos lighter than the production version, and of course that makes a massive difference to acceleration and cornering ability as well in particular. Couple that with the downforce, the sequential gearbox, it's a monster, goes without saying. And it's not just the top speed rating that's good, across the board it's a very, very good car. They give it a 9 for acceleration, for braking and for grip, and then a 7 for drifting. Now, as far as the drifting part, I wouldn't give it a 7. <laughs> that seems a little bit too high. It's actually better than that, I would say, more like a 5, because it's not a tail-happy car in the slightest, which is surprising, considering it's a rear-wheel drive, very powerful Italian exotic, but not at all. It's a very, very grippy car, and you actually have to engage the e-brake very deliberately to get this thing to actually drift. Under normal circumstances, it's an absolute grip monster. It corners exactly like it should, which is on rails. And I would probably categorize this as maybe one of the top five or six best cars in the game. In fact, overall. Up against stuff like the Caparo, the Toyota GT1, stuff like the Radical SR9, maybe even the CLK GTR Supersport, those are among the absolute best all-rounders, and this one definitely deserves to be up there with those. The acceleration isn't quite as strong as some, top speed isn't quite as strong, but it's so good through corners, and it's one of the only GT1 cars of its type in the game, because of course the Toyota GT1 is not this car's rival, naturally. That's a late 90s silly GT1 Le Mans car, as they're often called, which is a very different thing. But this one feels fantastic. It's very cool to see it in the game because there are so few racing games to actually feature this version, which is kind of strange to me. I would have assumed that this was the kind of car that like Forza would have had at some point. It seems very Forza-esque. And of course Forza had some. You got the Diablo GTR, 
We've had variations of the MRC Elego, including the original, the LP640, the SV, even the offshoots like the Reventon, the Gallardo race car even, but for some reason they opted never to have this one, which surprises me because it would have been very, very popular, I have no doubt, especially based on how popular stuff like the Celine and the Maserati, the Corvette, the Aston DBR9, they're always very popular cars, kind of strange not to feature this one. So of course it is in that weird position where you would assume it would be a lot more popular than it actually is and I can't really explain that to be honest. I do not understand why more people don't talk about this car and love it more, especially given that it did win races, but for whatever reason the race car seems to ironically be the least iconic version of the Murcielago, which I guess in an interesting kind of way is a testament to just how good and how popular the road versions already are. If they can overshadow the popularity of the racing version, you must have done something right, and I think that with the Murcielago overall as a range of cars, Lamborghini definitely did do something right, because it was one of the best supercars of the early 2000s. Personally, I'm probably the biggest fan of the LP640, the Roadster in particular, but I know a lot of people still have a huge amount of love for the original, and from a design point of view, it's a very clean, classy, gorgeous looking car, and of course this is based on that one, so you have that same advantage, smooth, very early 2000s style body with the huge wing, the body kit, the screaming engine of course, the very race derived interior, for obvious reasons, and overall, check it out. If you do get a chance to play Project Gotham, give this car a go. You will not be disappointed, that's for sure. It's an absolute monster. But that's it overall for this review. Of course, I will see you guys next time, and here's hoping that we see this car maybe in a few more games. It would be nice for it to get more exposure. But that's it for this pick. As I said, I'll see you next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.